Yes, uh, hello students, welcome back to our channel. So in our previous video we have talked about, we have uh, seen, we have discussed regarding the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So right now you have information regarding what a nucleophile it, it is and how does the nucleophilic substitution reaction take place. So now let us see the mechanism of this nucleophilic substitution reaction. We have two types of mechanisms. So we have two types of uh, mechanisms in nucleophilic substitution reaction. One is SN1 mechanism. SN1 mechanism. It is the unimolecular unimolecular nucleophilic. Unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction, and we have the second one, SN2 mechanism. Here we have the bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. Clear, students? So in this. Uh, these two are very very important from the point of your board examination SN1 and SN2 mechanism. So let us deeply understand this SN1 mechanism now. SN1 mechanism it stands for the unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. I said you that you know about this thing, nucleophilic substitution reaction. So we are understanding the mechanism involved in the nucleophilic substitution reaction. That means how how a nucleophile can substitute an hydrogen or a, can substitute an halogen which is present in a halo alkane. What are the steps involved in that? Let us take that by taking an example. We have two types of SN1 and SN2, and SN1 is completely different from SN2 mechanism. Okay, that will take place in a different way. So let us understand this SN1 mechanism. Let's take an example of we have tertiary butyl bromide. We have tertiary butyl bromide when it is treated with sodium hydroxide. Just a second, let me get the full bond. So let's take the example of tertiary butyl bromide. Tertiary butyl bromide. This is tertiary butyl bromide, and when it is reacted with sodium hydroxide, it has a nucleophile. It will be in the form of Na plus plus OH minus. Clear? So what happens is this nucleophile OH minus then is electron rich component will attack will substitute this halogen will halogen in the halo alkyls now let us see what will be the product and how this reaction will take place you know that the product will be the product will be this bromine will be substituted by will be substituted by the hydroxyl group okay so we have OH and we have sodium bromide. Sodium bromide. This is tertiary butyl alcohol. This is sodium bromide and we have tertiary butyl bromide and we have sodium hydroxide 
clear student so this is the reaction in what okay so now let us understand the mechanism this mechanism involves involves two steps this mechanism involves two steps and it is a second mechanism it is free molecular nucleophilic substitution reaction mechanism so okay the first step is that is step 1 step 1 we have the formation of carbocation we have the formation of carbocation what we have this tertiary butyl bromide will lead to the breaking of bond and it forms an carbocation let us see that we have this tertiary butyl bromide and it will get ionized itself and it forms plus it forms an carbocation tertiary butyl carbocation with the liberation of bromine and br oxide okay this is the first step this is the first step there is the formation of carbocation tertiary butyl bromide and ionization it forms an carbocation with br minus okay so now step 2 is step 2 is so this now the action of nucleophile takes place we have the carbocation now it is positively charged with the carbocation okay so now the nucleophile from sodium hydroxide will attack this carbocation to form the final product let us see now the nucleophile the nucleophile attacks attacks the carbocation to form to form the alcohols clear form the alcohols i think is this principle so we have this we have this carbocation and the carbocation is attacked is attacked by the nucleophile this nucleophile attacks this carbocation and it forms a new bond new bond with this carbocation and leads to the formation of and leads to the formation of leads to the formation of tertiary butyl alcohol here yes, students uh, so this is the simple mechanism of uh, In examination, they may even ask like this: as How does tertiary butyl alcohol be obtained from tertiary butyl bromide with the help of sodium hydroxide? A uh, simple way of explaining is explain a simple uh, mechanism in an example. This is a simple reaction we have. We have tertiary butyl bromide redistributed with sodium hydroxide. Nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place. So this is a nucleophile, and we have an halogen here. So that will be substituted, and you get the product of tertiary butyl alcohol. I said that alcohol is the general formula of ROH. Okay, here ROH is the functional group. So this complete thing is we have the mass R. Clear? So it forms tertiary butyl alcohol and sodium bromide as the salt. That is the byproduct. And this reaction, this reaction takes place in two steps. Step one is there will be the formation of a carbocation. That means a positive carbon ion will be formed. So what we have the tertiary butyl bromide ionizes itself to form a carbocation, and then this carbocation is attacked by the nucleophile. Nucleophile at fine forms tertiary butyl alcohol. Clear student? So this product, this product, what we have, it is a racemic mixture. Okay, we study regarding that. This is the racemic mixture. That means 
it is the combination of two equal enantiomers regarding this enantiomers and acidic mixtures you have to need you first you see organic chemistry first chapter so you need to study regarding that okay this is the concept and we have two steps in SN1 mechanism now let us focus on SN2 mechanism We have we have a set two mechanism. It is the bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. This mechanism takes place in single step, whereas a single mechanism it had two steps. One is the formation of carbocation and then attack of the nucleophile that is OH minus two carbocation form alcohol. Okay. So whereas in this case we have only one step. Okay, so now directly let's go back to the reaction. We have we have methyl chloride or we call it as chloromethane. Chloromethane. When chloromethane is reacted with aqueous sodium hydroxide. When chloromethane it is reacted with sodium hydroxide, what it forms? The same thing. We have the nucleophile and we have the halogen here. So nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place. It forms CH3OH and sodium chloride. Yeah. So this is the reaction involved. We have chloromethane. We have sodium hydroxide and we have got methanol and Sodium chloride as the byproduct. Okay, so now let us look at the mechanism how it happens. Now it involves only one step. It involves this reaction takes place in a single step. Split. Okay, so the thing is we have we have chloromethane. We have chloromethane here. Okay, so now at the same time, at the same time, OH minus, we have the nucleophile OH minus. This nucleophile OH minus will attack, will attack the carbon. Okay, so the nucleophile here will attack the carbon and please note, please note, there is already a very good bond between carbon and chlorine. There is a strong covalent bond between carbon and chlorine initially. And when this OH minus nucleophile attacks, this, now let us see what happens. Okay, so then we have, then we have, we have hydrogen, 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 chlorine. So this is the dotted line. We need to observe this. We need to observe this. So this state we call it as transition state. Clear? Yeah. So we had methyl chloride when OH there is the nucleophile attack. Generally, initially we had a strong bond between carbon and chlorine. So after the attack of the nucleophile, this carbon and chlorine bond is partially broken. So we have mentioned, we have denoted in dark dot side. Okay, we do not have a complete single line. We have the line dotted line. Yeah, this states that the bond is partially broken. Okay, so now CCl bond is partially broken and COH bond is partially made. Okay. The thing is, this is not also a complete process and this is also not a complete process. CCL bond is only partially broken now and COH bond, COH bond is partially marked, partially formed. Okay, so now this CCL bond will be completely broken and COH bond will be formed. Okay, that is the last step, that is the last product. So we have 
we have heads, 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 and we have more heads and heads. Yeah, so this is ethanol and chlorine. Chlorine, we get as a byproduct as in a CL. Uh, we can even get it as CL minus. Clear, yeah, students? So, this is a symptom mechanism. In this case, the mechanism will take place, the mechanism will take place in a single step. Okay, all this, the formation of newborn and the breaking of the old bud will take place simultaneously. It will, take, it will take place at a single time. Okay, at the single time, the old bud will, the old water is between carbon and chlorine will be broken and the new bond between carbon and OH, hydroxyl group will be newly formed. That is the transition state. And finally, we get the methanol. Clear? So, the product which is obtained here as the inversion configuration. This is also studied in organic chemistry first chapter. So, in that product, in SN1 mechanism was a racemic mixture. But here we have inversion configuration. That means the configuration have been inverted. Okay, the configuration of the product have been inverted in case of the product of SN2 mechanism. So, this is very important, very simple reactions. But you need to be very careful while mentioning the arrows and also the transition state also. Yeah. So students, now let us look at some differences between SL1 and SL2 mechanism. You know that SN1 mechanism stands for unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction and whereas in case of SN2 mechanism it is bimolecular nucleophilic Substitution reaction. Yeah, and second one is it follows first order appendix regarding this first order appendix and second order appendix. You know when we are talking about the chapter chemical kinetics, and it follows. Follows second order kinetics. Okay, and the rate, the rate of the reaction, rate in case of SN1 mechanism, rate of the reaction depends only on the concentration of alkyl halide. Concentration of alkyl halide, whereas here rate depends on concentration of both alkyl halide and and nucleophile also. Okay, and the fourth one is. The rate of reactivity, the rate of reactivity in case of SN1 mechanism will be more for tertiary followed by secondary and followed by primary and last is methyl halide group. Methyl halide group in this case, the, the for, in this, for this reason only SN1 mechanism is easily caused in tertiary bitter product. Okay, for tertiary carbon compounds. SN1 mechanism is having higher reactions clear whereas in this case opposite of this SN2 we have the least reaction is possible in tertiary tertiary secondary primary and finally we end up with the metal halide clear so and next is the product is a racemic mixture
the product is a respect mixture here product is n inversion the product is an inversion configuration means that respect mixture means the combination of two equal enantiomers whereas in this inversion configuration the configuration only will invert here yeah? so these are the five differences SMM and SM2 mechanism. So it is very important from the point of the board examination, both SMM and SM2 mechanism and the differences also. Thank you, students.